today is a day for us to come together and be thankful. So here's where we're going today. We have a channel in Zinnia, which is called Holidays. And we are so fortunate to have on the call with us today, the amazing Berenice Freedom, who is the person who makes these amazing videos. The one that we're going to watch today together is the Thanksgiving Day video. For those of you who use Zinnia, if you're not aware of this, is I can go to the speed and I'm going to drop the speed down. And the reason I do that is because I wanna be able to have a conversation with you while the video is playing. So with that said, I am going to go ahead and start the video, the video playing. Thanksgiving Day. Allison, do you want to go full screen? Bill, you are awesome. Thank you for reminding me. I do want to go full screen. Thanksgiving Day. Well, here we are with turkeys. Did you know that it's only male turkeys that make the gobble, gobble, gobble sound? Yeah, it's just the guys. If you want to try making that sound at home by yourselves, you can. Gobble, 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 gobble. So we've come to think of turkey as the centerpiece of the Thanksgiving table, but at the first Thanksgiving, they didn't eat turkey. They ate ducks and geese and believe it or not, swans. The pilgrims enjoyed their first Thanksgiving with the local native people called the Wampanoag. Wampanoag means people of the first light. And in the 1600s, there were over 40,000 Wampanoag people living in 67 villages. The pilgrims were so thankful for the native people because the native people taught them things like how to grow corn, they taught them how to fish. They taught them which native berries and plants were edible and which ones were dangerous. The pilgrims were thankful for the first people. The native people were thankful for corn. They were thankful for squash and they were thankful for beans. And they used to plant those three plants close together they called them the three sisters. The corn grows tall. Its sister, the bean plant, climbs up the corn. And the other sister, the squash plant, grows at the base of the corn, crowding out all of the weeds. The native people were thankful for the three sisters. Where I live in Seattle, Washington, there are leaves all over the ground right now. They are not as beautiful as these leaves. Still, I am thankful for the beautiful colors of the autumn leaves. That's so peaceful. I am thankful for babies. Kiss. And I'm pretty sure that babies are thankful that they have leaves to play in. <laughs> Look at that baby. In some parts of the United States, there is snow at Thanksgiving time. Like where my brother lives up in Vermont, he's already had plenty of snow. And in some places at Thanksgiving time, it's even cold enough to ice skate. And what a great thing to be able to go outdoors and play in the snow or play in the leaves and ice skate to start building up an appetite for my Thanksgiving meal. I really wish that I had one of these that was big enough for me to sit in and that I had somebody big enough to pull me. <laughs> one of the things that I bought yesterday, just yesterday at the store for my Thanksgiving table are some beautiful flowers. 
I bought a bouquet of lilies. They are beautiful white lilies that are gracing my table. And I am thankful for flowers. What are you thankful for? When people arrive at my house tomorrow for Thanksgiving, I am going to have a puzzle out and I'm going to have some board games for them to play while they settle in and they chat. If they play chess, I will not play with them because they will beat me. <laughs> I'm terrible at chess. <laughs> but you know what? I can't play with them because I am going to be busy in the kitchen cooking the meal while my guests are enjoying themselves and settling in. I wonder what they are making right there. Cookies? Well, I will be doing this tomorrow. I will put oil or maybe butter on the turkey to help it get nice and brown while it's in the oven. My dad always put strips of bacon on the turkey so that the bacon fat would drip over the turkey while it was cooking to get the skin nice and crisp. I will be preparing vegetables to be roasted or boiled. I'm going to be making greens I'm going to be making sweet potatoes. I did buy five pounds of yellow onions yesterday at the store to use in my Thanksgiving cooking. I think I'll put them in the stuffing. And of course, I will be cooking potatoes. I will be boiling them. And then, of course, I will mash them. I am so thankful <laughs> for mashed potatoes, especially mashed potatoes with gravy. How many turkeys do you think that Americans eat each Thanksgiving? Any idea? Five million, maybe? 20 million? 46 million. Americans eat 46 million turkeys at Thanksgiving time. That is a lot of turkeys. Before my guests arrive, I will already have set the table. And I like watching the way that they set their table here because it's giving me some good ideas. That maybe I could go pick up some beautiful leaves from outside and put them on the table. Maybe I could make little notes to put on people's plates. Candles. I like the idea of candles on the table. And look at this. They're serving the food in a little pumpkin. I am not nearly clever enough <laughs> to serve food in a little pumpkin. I do hope that everybody will clap when I put the <laughs> on the table. Yay. I am so thankful for the family and friends who will join me at my table for Thanksgiving. Look at that beautiful spread. Cranberry sauce, roasted mushrooms. Before we eat in my house, we always bless the food. We just do a little blessing, it's a song, we say, for what I am about to receive, may my heart be truly thankful. And then, of course, comes the big moment when we start to carve the turkey. Who carves the turkey? at your house. When I was a little girl, it was always my dad who carved the turkey. 
But at my house, it's usually me <laughs> who carves the turkey. I wonder if you prefer white meat or dark meat. Do you have a preference for white meat or dark meat? I like dark meat myself. And of course, I always save the wishbone and I dry it out so that after Thanksgiving, I get to make a wish. I'm going to have roasted rutabagas on my table. Not everybody likes rutabagas. It's the one time of year that I eat them. But boy, oh boy, do I like them. And when I was a little girl, we would fight over the drumstick at my grandmother's house. My grandfather would get one drumstick, which meant that there was one left and all of the cousins wanted it. And my grandmother always gave it to my cousin, Michael, which I felt was very unfair. That looks delicious. I hope that my turkey comes out as tender and moist as that one. Do you take little tiny portions of things and then go back for seconds or do you fill your plate all the way up at Thanksgiving? I think I tend to fill mine all the way up. One of the reasons I got such a big turkey this year is because I want to have plenty of leftovers. There's, there's a poll that came out recently that showed that more people prefer leftovers to the actual Thanksgiving meal. <laughs> Open up, baby. When the meal is over, who washes the dishes at your house? Hmm. I actually like washing the dishes. I find it to be kind of meditative. Still, I am, I am very thankful for my dishwasher. And then with the bulk of the tables, a bulk of the dishes removed from the table, it is a perfect time to sit back and relax with our dessert. Maybe a cup of coffee or decaf coffee. I am thankful for desserts. I'm thankful for all of the things that help make life sweet. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs>